Do you know the ancient tale of the Tuatha de Danann, the gods veiled in mist and magic, who descended upon the emerald shores of Ireland, bringing with them wisdom as deep as the stars? These divine beings, known as the people of the goddess Danu, were masters of craft, sorcery, and nature, their very presence vibrating with the pulse of the earth and the heavens. As they set foot on the land, the skies darkened with thunder and the ground trembled beneath them. Their arrival heralded a new age for Ireland, yet it was not a land freely given. Battles loomed ahead and the forces of darkness stirred. Upon their descent, they faced the Fear Bolg, the fierce inhabitants of the island, in a bloody clash of might and magic. The air crackled with energy as Nuada, the leader of the Tuatha de Danann, raised his sword high, his warriors following with spells and spears. But victory came at a cost. Nuada's arm, severed in battle, was the price he paid. As his blood spilled on the earth, the Tuatha knew their claim to the land was not yet secure. Darker forces still lurked, watching, waiting, their eyes filled with the hunger of chaos. The wrath of the Fomorians, creatures of darkness, was not far behind, and the land would tremble once more. The Tuatha de Danann sailed from the mystical realm of Tir Nanog, where time stood still and beauty never faded. The skies darkened as their ethereal ships cut through the clouds, the wind whispering ancient secrets. Thunder rolled across the heavens, announcing their arrival. They carried with them treasures of immense power, each one glowing with its own magic. Nuada's sword, gleaming like silver moonlight, promised victory in every battle. Lug's spear, swift and unstoppable, sang with the energy of storms. Dagda's cauldron, a vessel of endless bounty, brimmed with life-giving abundance. And the Stone of Fall, a silent witness, waiting to roar in recognition of Ireland's true kings. As they descended, the land itself seemed to tremble, sensing the arrival of these godlike beings. The air thickened with the charge of their magic, and a mist curled around their feet as they stepped onto the shores of Ireland. The time has come, Nuada murmured, his gaze sweeping over the Emerald Hills. Their destiny was not just to claim the land, but to reshape it with wisdom and power. Each breath they took seemed to pulse with the promise of transformation, and the quiet hum of the sacred treasures echoed across the island, heralding the dawn of a new age. Ireland was not an empty land when the Tuatha de Danann arrived. The island was already ruled by the Fear Bolg, a hardy and fierce people who stood ready to defend their homeland against the newcomers. The first battle of Mag Twyred was fought on the blood-soaked plains, where magic crackled in the air, and the sounds of battle echoed through the mountains. Under the leadership of Nuada, the Tuatha de Danann wielded their formidable magic, yet even their power could not shield them from loss. In the thick of battle, Nuada fought valiantly, but fate struck a cruel blow. His arm was severed, leaving him maimed. According to the sacred laws of the Tuatha de Danann, no leader could be king if they were not whole in body. The weight of this realization fell upon Nuada as the battle raged around him. His warriors, sensing his pain, fought with renewed vigor, determined to claim victory even as their leader fell. The Fear Bulg, though formidable, could not withstand the might of the Tuatha de Danann. Their magic, born of ancient wisdom, surged through the battlefield. The earth trembled beneath their feet, and the sky itself seemed to bend to their will. When the dust settled, the Fear Bulg had been driven back, their power diminished. Yet despite this hard-won victory, the Tuatha de Danann's triumph was bittersweet, for their king had been rendered unfit to rule, and the shadow of change loomed over their future. The loss of Nuada's arm cast a long shadow over the Tuatha de Danann. In the eyes of his people, a king must be whole in body, for a broken form reflected a broken kingdom. With heavy hearts, they chose Brez, a prince of both Tuatha de Danann and Fomorian blood, to lead. Yet Brez, though fair of face, ruled with a hand colder than the northern winds. He favored his Fomorian kin, taxing the people, taking their best harvests, and offering nothing but hardship in return. As seasons passed, the once flourishing land wilted, crops failed, the rivers ran low, and the skies themselves seemed to weep with grief. 
The people whispered in the dark, their voices heavy with despair. This cannot be our fate, said one elder, her gnarled hands shaking as she cast a gaze over the withered fields. We were once proud, our magic bound to the land, but now, all is slipping away. The elders gathered beneath the ancient oak, its branches barren. They spoke of the old days, of Nuada's just reign, and the harmony that once flowed through the hills. Something had to change. They could feel it in their bones, like the first stirrings of a storm on the horizon. We must seek out Lug, another elder whispered, his voice thick with urgency, as the shadows deepened around them. In their darkest hour, when the Tuatha de Danann stood at the brink of defeat, Lug, the god of light and unmatched in every craft, stepped forward. The air around him crackled with energy, and the skies seemed to brighten as he raised his spear, its point gleaming like a star. His eyes, fierce and determined, surveyed his people, who had suffered under the harsh rule of the Fomorians. The monstrous beings, with their chaotic power, had brought the land to its knees, but now hope returned with Lug's presence. With his voice echoing across the hills, Lug declared, The time has come to reclaim what is ours. His words resonated deeply within the hearts of the Tuatha de Danann, stirring ancient courage and awakening the magic that flowed in their veins. The warriors stood taller, their weapons gleaming under the gods' light. As they prepared for the second battle of Mag Tuired, the tension was palpable. The Fomorians were powerful, their leader Baylor with his deadly eye capable of destruction with a single gaze. But Lu, radiant with divine light, wielded his spear as though it was an extension of his very will. The battle that would decide their fate was about to begin, and with Lu at the helm, hope flickered once more amidst the shadow of chaos. The Fomorians, ancient beings of chaos and destruction, were led by the terrifying Baylor of the Evil Eye. His gaze, known to turn battlefields to ashes, struck terror into all who faced him. The clash between the Tuatha de Danann and the Fomorians was not merely a war of strength, but of magic and fate. As the armies gathered, the air thickened with tension, the ground trembling under the weight of impending doom. Lug, the god of light and skill, stood ready. His heart pounded, but his resolve was unwavering. I will not let this land fall into darkness, he muttered, gripping his enchanted spear. As Baylor's eye began to open, casting a deadly beam across the battlefield, Lug moved with lightning speed. His spear, gleaming with a radiant glow, cut through the air like a flash of fire. In one fluid motion, Lug hurled it with all his might, and the weapon found its mark, the very center of Baylor's malevolent eye. The impact was cataclysmic. Baylor, the giant who could fell armies with a glance, staggered, his monstrous frame collapsing as the evil eye dimmed. A great roar echoed through the hills as the Fomorian leader crumbled to the ground. Lug stood tall, the light of victory shining in his eyes. The Tuatha de Danann, bolstered by their courage and magic, had won the day, securing their place as the rulers of Ireland. With the Fomorians vanquished, the Tuatha de Danann rose as the rightful stewards of Ireland. The land, once plagued by chaos, now flourished under their divine guidance. The air was crisp and clean, the rivers ran clear, and the fields shimmered with the promise of abundant harvests. Each morning the mists would lift from the hills, revealing a kingdom at peace, as the Tuatha brought with them the gifts of healing, craftsmanship, and wisdom. At the heart of this new era stood the Dagda, the good god, a figure of immense strength and fatherly kindness. His cauldron, a vessel of endless bounty, never failed to nourish those gathered around it. The people, once weary from war, found comfort in the Dagda's care. His deep laughter would roll across the valleys, bringing warmth to every hearth. Eat and be filled, he would say, passing the cauldron to those in need, his voice like the rumble of distant thunder, yet filled with a tenderness that eased the soul. Under the Dagda's watchful eye, Ireland thrived, its people growing strong, its culture rich with the arts and magic brought by the Tuatha de Danann. Their presence transformed the land, 
their ancient wisdom woven into the very soil, guiding the growth of crops, the creation of wonders, and the flourishing of life. Though their power was vast, their reign was not meant to endure forever. The land trembled with the arrival of the Milesians, mortals destined to rule the land of Ireland. The Tuatha de Danann, once proud rulers of the island, found themselves facing a final, inescapable fate. In the soft twilight of their reign, they realized that the time of gods was fading, and the era of mortals had begun. Unable to withstand the relentless advance of these human invaders, they retreated into the Shi Mounds, the mystical hills that dotted the landscape. There, beneath the earth, they vanished from mortal sight. Yet they were not defeated. Within the mounds, their magic lived on, a quiet hum beneath the soil, the whispers of forgotten gods still shaping the destiny of the land. We are not gone, the Tuatha de Danann seemed to say, as they withdrew into the shadows of the other world, their realm of eternal twilight. Invisible to human eyes, they became the guardians of Ireland's spirit, guiding its fortunes from beyond, forever present, though unseen. In the rustle of the wind through the ancient trees, in the shimmer of the evening mist, their presence lingers, reminding the world that though the age of gods may pass, their influence endures, woven into the very fabric of the land. Even in their retreat, the Tuatha de Danann did not fade from Ireland's soul. Their essence lingers, like whispers carried on the winds that sweep across the rolling hills. The ancient mounds where they once ruled pulse with a quiet energy, a reminder that they are never far. The rivers shimmer with their magic, the mountains stand as silent witnesses to their triumphs and tragedies. At Tara, the Stone of Fall remains, waiting for the touch of a rightful king to make it roar once more, as it did in days long past. The legends of Lug, the brilliant warrior with his unbeatable spear, Dagda, the wise and powerful god, and Danu, the mother of all, weave through Irish folklore like threads of gold. Their stories are not merely remembered, they are felt. The land itself holds their presence, and in every tale passed from one generation to the next, their power echoes, unfaded by time. This is no distant memory. The Tuatha de Danann are still here, beneath the earth, beneath the stories, alive in the hearts of the people and in the very soil of Ireland. They remain the silent guardians of the land, watching as the world changes, yet never disappearing, eternal as the hills they once ruled. The tale of the Tuatha de Danann is one not only of gods and magic, but of endurance and profound transformation. Imagine the winds howling across the ancient Irish landscape as these divine beings descended, cloaked in mist and mystery, their eyes glowing with the wisdom of ages. The clash of steel rang through the valleys as they fought for dominion over the land, their magic interwoven with the very fabric of nature. The skies darkened, and the earth trembled beneath their feet, yet they fought not only for power, but for the preservation of balance. Their victories in battle brought brief triumph, but destiny had other plans. As the mortal Milesians arrived, bringing with them the inevitable tide of change, the Tuatha de Danann did not flee in defeat. Instead, they retreated to the Shi, the mystical mounds beneath the earth, where their magic remains alive. Their retreat was not surrender, but a transformation. No longer rulers of the land, they became guardians of the unseen, their presence felt in every whisper of the wind and gleam of morning dew. Now the Tuatha de Danann live on, their essence entwined with the ancient mists of Ireland. Their story teaches us that power is fleeting, but true wisdom and harmony with nature endure forever, quietly shaping the world.